assalamu alaikum in our last video we have studied about the in, uh, like we have studied about introduction of uh, inverter switching characteristics where we have derived some expressions for input and output capacitances and we have also seen that how like the uh, the capacitance of our mosfets depends uh, like controls uh, or depends on our uh, c out capacitance or uh, basically controls the or c out capacitance and uh, we have seen that like how our uh, output capacitance is modeled like that depends on our MOSFET capacitance and also on the, uh, the load capacitance. Now we will study in this video session about the rise and fall times uh, of our like output signals and also how the maximum switching frequency can be limited using uh, uh, by this uh, rise and fall times. The first expression we have is our rise time where we know that this rise time is like uh, uh, is defined by a signal like a signal time that that is like required to uh, rise an output signal from 0 to VDD volts and similarly the fall time is uh, the inverse of our rise time the, it is a time required when like the output signal falls from like VDD to 0 volts so these two quantities uh, represent like uh, two different times one is uh, the one is uh, basically one represents the time when uh, signal uh, like changes from zero to vdd and the other represents uh, the signal change from vdd to, VDD to zero and then uh, the other important factor that is like linked with the rise time and fall time is the maximum speed of our CMOS circuits we can say that the rise time and fall time limits the speed of our like uh, the of our CMOS circuits because the rise and fall times limit the operation speed of our circuits. So we we can say that the maximum switching speed uh, sw switching frequency is limited, like and this frequency is limited with the rise and fall times. So now we will calculate or we, can, we will derive some expressions for rise and fall times and uh, we can we will also see that how this uh, this maximum switching frequency can be modeled using this rise and fall times uh, or we can say that how it is limited uh, by these rise and fall times so first we will calculate uh, the fall time for our inverter uh, for that, uh, like uh, first, uh, the calculation will be for the time of uh, inverter. So, for the fall time, uh, like uh, calculation, we assume that k, uh, like we assume, we assume like at t is equal to zero, the input voltage p in that, that changes from 0 to VGD like it was initially 0 volts then it changed its value to VDD and the initial condition at output initial condition at output is given by like it is V out of 0 is equal to VDD like when input is switched and fit and fit will be active and prefit will uh, obviously go in cutoff mode so we can say that when we switch or like when we switch our input then and fit will be active and p fed like p uh, f fed will be in cut off so like for this condition uh, we can like uh, we can draw a simplified circuit where we say that like uh, this simplified circuit
in this simplified circuit we can say that like we assume here here this this represents our switch model like this is this is our like uh, n fact this is our n fact then we have a capacitor att attached at the output like this is our output capacitance of this uh, like nmos uh, like this is our c out and v out here this is connected to ground and this is also connected to ground and we can say that at condition like uh, at this condition when n fact will be active it means like this switch is closed and this is like this our p uh, p mos is equal to off we have the state here what would happen like how can we calculate this uh, like fall time here like we have a voltage that is fully charged and we have a current that is flowing in this direction from here and it is known as like we can represent it as i so this i current basically uh, discharges through this path here from this uh, the capacitor c out then it goes to the n fact and then to it goes to ground and uh, we have missed one thing here like there will be a uh, resistor at the with like this this resistance represent our rn of our nmos so at time like we can say that at t is equal to 0 c out is charged like c out is charge with vdd like the full voltage that is charged at uh, like rc out is vdd and when our p fed goes in cutoff mode and like our N nmos goes in active mode what happens is the capacitor discharges so we can say that this capacitor this capacitor discharging the c out capacitor discharging through this uh, rn resistance can be written as like this current can be written as uh, like the discharging current can be written as like this current can be written as minus c out t v out divided by d of t obviously that 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 depends on time as well and we can also say that this current is equal to like this voltage is this voltage from here to here this terminal like this uh, if i represent it with different color uh, this voltage here this is our v out voltage so we can say that this uh, current is equal to this i is equal to voltage across this resistor so this equation can be written as i is equal to v out divided by rn so we have like uh, equation with uh, two different like values so we can equate these equation and we can like get c out is equal to dv out divided by dt so this is not equal to but we can write it as, as like v out divided by or fn so this is our equation for like uh, uh, if, if we create like equation this one and this two equation here and if we rearrange and then like uh, we solve it we have to solve it for uh, like v out voltage so we rearrange and we like put v out voltages on one side of the equation so we get uh, something like 1 over v out dv out and this is equal to minus 1 over c out and rn and dt so we just rearrange this equation here so now we, what we have to do is we have to integrate uh, like uh, both uh, both the sides here because we have to remove this d d out sign like derivative of v out sign so we integrate uh, both equations integrate both sides but obviously with limits and what limits we have we have uh, limit diff different different limits for v out and uh, obviously the time our v out varies from like 
this V out varies from like uh, uh, we can say that it varies from V out of 0 to V out of T and for T we can write that it varies from 0 to a time which is represented by T so we integrate both sides of our equation and we can uh, write it at, as V out of 0 V out of T and on this side of our equation we have 1 over V out dV out is equal to like this is our constant we can uh, write it outside of the integral and we have integral of like uh, this is integral of dt the limits are 0 to t and we can say that if we solve these integrals we will get like on this side of our the, the, on the left side of our integral we will get ln of like ln of v out this is uh, like the limits are v out of 0 and v out of t and on the other side we can get c out rn minus sign and then we have limits 0 to t and if we solve this integral at this equation here we will get like on the left hand side we will get ln of uh, this will be like ln of v out of t and then we have ln of v out of 0 this is equal to like minus t divided by c out and rn so now what we have to do is like we have to solve this expression so that we can find the value of c out uh, sorry the value of uh, v out on the left hand side we just uh, like uh, take the ln common so that we can uh, write it in a different way we write it as ln of v out of t divided by v out of 0 so here we can replace a value here like we know that v out of 0 here is represented by v d so we can replace this term here this v out of 0 with v d d so we replace this value here that is v d d because the initial value of our output voltage was 0 volts and we can write on the right side of our equation that is minus t c out and rn now we have to solve this for like v out value like we take exponent on uh, like on our uh, uh, like on uh, both of the sides so we can write it as v out of t divided by vdd which is equal to exponent of minus t divided by c out and rn sorry this is rn here and we can also say that if we uh, rearrange this expression v out is equal to vdd exponent of minus t divided by c out rn here in this equation like this expression c out rn can be written as tau, tau of n like this is our time constant like time constant for our rc time constant for our uh, the nmos circuit so we can write this expression as v out is equal to vdd exponent of minus t divided by tau tau of n like we know that this tau of n is equal to c out rn and now what we can do is like we can find or we can plot this expression like if we want to plot v out like if we want to plot this v out and with respect to like this time here this time t so now i have to plot this expression here if we plot this expression that graph would be something like uh, something like this we have uh, on x axis we have our time and we have v out of t on our y axis so we assume that initially our voltage was at vdd volts 
like this was the capacitor was capacitor was charged at uh, at its full then what happens is when our voltage increases or uh, after some time it drops out to zero volts so obviously it takes some time to get to the zero volts we take two different uh, points here like one point is or like this point here we know we like we tag it as v1 and one point we tag it as v0 like this point here it is like this at this point we can say that we can represent it as t of x at time t of x the voltage is at v1 and at time like at this time which is t of y the voltage is at v0 and here in this graph uh, we can say that this voltage is like v1 v1 is uh, like a voltage that represents 90% of our vdd which means that v1 is equal to 0.9 of vdd and also v0 is 10% of our vdd and this 10% means v not is equal to 0.1% like 0.1 of vdd so we can say that these two like these two uh, are uh, the voltages the voltage levels rep will represent our like fault time so we can say that we can say uh, like uh, in the, in this expression here like from this point until this point there is a different like a uh, different delay so this point is represented by from here to here it is represented by uh, uh, the uh, uh, this is our fault time t of f so we can say that this time represents our fault time so to find this uh, this value the tf value we have to rearrange this equation here which is uh, which was written for the v out here this uh, this uh, this expression so if we solve this expression for our time t that can be written as t is equal to tau of n ln of vdd divided by v out of t so this expression represents a time uh, equation for our like uh, for our circuits so we also can say that this tf here the tf is equal to the subtraction of ty minus tx so it will be ty minus tx and then what we have to do is we have to find uh, like uh, the expression for our time like using this uh, using uh, this equation like this equation number 3 so if we put the values in our equation number 3 using this expression tf we will get an equation which will be something like tf is equal to tau of n ln of vdd divided by 0.1 vdd and then we have ln of vdd divided by 0.9 vdd because this point represents our vy value and this point represents our vx value so if we solve this expression here we will get something like like tau of n ln of like this ln of will be 1 over 0.1 plus ln of 1 over 0.9 the final uh, uh, let me now like uh, obviously let me like write it uh, in a shorter way like we can write the final expression the tf will be equal to 2.2 of tau of n it means that like our fault time uh, can be represented by 2.2 multiplied by uh, tau of n and uh, you know that this tau of n was r n and c out so the fault time depends on the output capacitance and our output the resistance of our channel the resistance of our, our and mos and this time 
can also be represented by high to low time like this high to low time and it can also be written as in some uh, books or notes uh, that is t h of l so this was our calculation for fall time on same patterns we can calculate the rise time as well so the next thing we have to do is we cal we will calculate the rise time here so second uh, so the second expression derivation is for rise time of inverter so what we have to do is again we have to assume at time is equal to 0 or v in changes from like vdd to 0 because we have to monitor our rise time here and initial condition for our v out is like initial condition of v out is equal to v out of 0 is equal to 0 volts so at time 0 our condition is like our uh, the, uh, the output of our circuit is the of output of our inverter is 0 and we can write we can uh, draw the simplified circuit here as well so the simplified circuit is given by like we have this uh, VDD here, we have RP capacitance, we have switch here, like we can model the switch here, is something like this. Then we have an output capacitance and then we can say that here we have an off state. So our current flows in this direction, that is our I, we have RP here, P, uh, it is connected to VDD. We have output capacitance and we have output voltage as well. This is uh, this is connected to ground and our N MOS is off. So N MOS is not conducting. So we have to ignore that uh, that expression. Now we can see that this current obviously uh, charges this capacitance, this capacitance here. So we can say that the current. is given by like this is given by i which is equal to c out dv out divided by t of t and we if we see here like if we have to find the current here we know that this voltage is here this is represented by v out like from this uh, this point like this voltage will be equal to v out and this is here VDD. So if we have to find the current that is passing through this circuit, that will be given by VDD minus V out divided by this capacity, this resistor. So I will be represented by I will be equal to VDD minus V out divided by RP. And also if we equate these two equations, equation 1 and equation 2, we will get an expression which is something like VDD minus V out divided by RP and we can also say that C out DV out divided by P of T. Now we have to do again what we have done for the fall time calculation. We have to rearrange this expression and we have to solve this for V out. So first we will rearrange this expression. If we take V out on one side of the expression, we will get something, uh, the expression which is something like 1 over VDD minus V out DV out which is equal to 1 over like C out and RP or and DT. So if we have to apply the integral, uh, like apply the integral. with obviously limits the limits for v out uh, the limits for v out are like 
that changes from initial condition to a condition that is at t and t basically varies from 0 to t so the uh, integral can be written as v out of 0 v out of t and uh, this was written as 1 over vdd minus v out dv out and this is equal to 1 over c out rp and integral of 0 to t and d t so if we if i solve this expression and i may skip some step uh, this this expression will be equal to minus ln of vdd minus v out and limits are v out of 0 and v out of t this is equal to like 1 over c out rp and obviously this is t that varies from 0 to t so now we have if we rearrange this expression and uh, uh, what can we do is we have we can put the value here for our like the initial condition this was equal to 0 so if we put the values here and solve for our uh, like solve this expression we will get an uh, an expression that is ln of vdd minus v out divided by vdd and this is equal to minus t divided by c out and rp here this uh, c out and rp can be written as tau of t that is uh, the time rc time constant of our mos and we can also say that if we solve this expression for v out so we will finally get this expression that is v out of like v out of t is equal to vdd minus vtd exponent of minus t by tau p now obviously we can take this vdd common here vdd into 1 minus exponent of minus t by tau p so this is our final expression for v out so what we have to do is we have to plot this v out against the time constant so now we have to plot this v out versus t curve we have on t on x axis we have v out of t on our y axis then at time 0 the curve is at 0 level then what happens is as time increases this curve goes to a higher level that is given by vdd so we can say that or obviously we can represent this the maximum value as vdd the minimum value as 0 and what other values we have we have here v0 we have here like v1 and also the difference between these two values like uh, this these two terms here we have this as t of like this is represented by t of u and this is represented by t of v and the difference between these two are represented by t of r that is rise time so uh, we can like uh, we can uh, use same uh, assumptions and calculations that we did for our fall time we have v1 is equal to 90 percent of vd we have v0 which is equal to 10 percent of our vdd and uh, similarly we have the like rise time is given by that is tr is, is given by tv minus t of u and if we solve this expression for t that is t is equal to tau of p and uh, we can write it as like vdd divided by vdd minus v out of t so what we have to do is now we have to calculate the tr and and obviously we have to put the values or we can solve these two expressions together and we can get the final value of our tr if we put the if we solve this expression here we will get 
tau of p is equal to sorry the tau of p the tau of p is multipliable ln of vdd divided by vdd minus 0.9 vdd and we have to subtract it from ln of vdd divided by vdd minus 0.1 vdd so if we solve this expression the uh, the tr comes out to be like this tr is given by 2.2 of tau of p like this is also same expression for r like uh, that 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 we calculate for r uh, the p most the n most expressions so we can also say that this t of r is represented by t of low to high t is, basically this is our rise time calculation so we can say that we can solve same expressions or we can solve the expressions and we can find the rise time and fall time using uh, using all these derivations and what we can conclude or what we can achieve from this rise time and fall time or what we can say about the speed of our circuits using these uh, these rise and fall times so what we have here is we have to find our maximum frequency of circuit like that that we have to find is the maximum operating frequency of our circuit like the maximum circuit the maximum frequency that our circuit can hold so consider we have we have applied a square wave here we have a square wave here the time is basically the total time period is t and the obviously that is a perfect square wave we have our t by 2 our high time and t by 2 are as a low time and we have a corresponding output here like if we draw output like at these points here So the output will be like uh, the input is high like this is our V in we are plotting here as V out if our input is high our output will go from high to low like it will be move it will move something like this uh, let me draw it again here like this will go from high to a low voltage then when it comes uh, the other signal comes the low signal comes it go will go from low to high and obviously again it will go to from high to low and then low to high so it means there there is a there is some delay which which basically causes uh, the signal to uh, change its value after some time so the signal can be represented by there is one signal that it, that is represented by t of like this is our fall time and this is represented by t of our rise time so we have two signals we have two delays which are obviously uh, both represented by different quantities basically what these two signals are like uh, we have calculated the values here but what these signals represent what we can like uh, we can assume from these two signals we can say that tf and th are two signals are two obviously two different uh, times that are needed to settle the output so these are two times which are required to settle our like output here like the output is settled at this point and also it is settled at this point so if in any case our signal like 
changes before this time like this signal goes high at this location like if it goes high at this location what would happen is there, there could be some error here or we can we cannot get the, the required output uh, obviously what we can say is the minimum time period required to like to operate for our circuit is given by like t min t min is given by t h of l plus t l h and obviously these two are equal to the fall time and t of r and we can say that maximum frequency is given by like f of max is given by 1 over t min and this is equal to 1 over t f plus t r so the maximum operating frequency can be found can be found from these two quantities that that are like r t r and r like t f means our rise time and fall time so the these two quantities are important like they basically define the operating frequency of our like of our circuits so we can also say that uh, that if we apply a signal that is greater than or obviously that is greater than the frequency the maximum frequency then the output will not be stabilized so uh, the final uh, the uh, the final say of this uh, these derivations is like if we apply frequency that is greater than like obviously f max the the outputs will not be ST stabilized so these were our calculations for like we have done a few calculations which included fall time we have done calculations for rise time and then finally we saw what the maximum operating frequency would be so these were our calculations for our rise time fall time and different uh, different operating frequencies so uh, this is it for uh, this session uh, in our next session we will talk about the propagation delay like the, pro the delay between input and output and then we all we will also discuss about uh, the power dissipation in our MOSFETs.